So it's the story of a woman who disguises herself as a man and goes to fight for the Union Army during the American Civil War. About, I guess it's about 18 years ago now, my wife came home from the Strand Bookstore in New York with this amazing looking book, um, which was called An Uncommon Soldier, and it's the Civil War letters of a woman named Sarah Rosetta Wakeman, who went to war um, as Lions Wakeman and fought for the Union Army. So it was these letters that she wrote that her family later collected after her death. And years later, um, they were published. Mm. Uh, and so that was this initial encounter with these stories. The research was the best part of it, um, I have to say. Uh, I spent many an hour um, with uh, the diaries, letters, memoirs of not just the women who did this, because we don't have very many uh, of these. There, there, were, there, there um, is an uncommon soldier and a couple of memoirs written, but other than that, no documents. And so I spent a lot of time with um, what the common everyday male soldiers left behind. Uh, and it's quite amazing. So it took me into used bookstores and the stacks of university libraries where books had not been checked out for 50 years. It was, it was really clear to me early on that I wasn't going to base the story on any one of these women. And there were 500 to 700 women who did this during the Civil War that they documented. And it may be the case that um, uh, there are actually more of them um, uh, yet to be uncovered. And so that there were many of these women, and all of them had extraordinary stories, but I didn't want to focus it on any one of them. I wanted to have aspects of all of these, these different women. So right from the start, I knew that I would be taking license, but I wanted it all to be based, um, absolutely based on the historical record. Um, so the kinds of things my character does are the kinds of things these actual women did. What she suffers are the, the types of things that these women suffered. Um, and so it was a, a process of taking this, you know, this, this initial kernel of inspiration and building the story around it, but never forgetting the kernel. I, you know, I sort of uh, go from the starting point that any time you are uh, writing about anyone, um, you've left yourself in a way. You've, le you've left your own parameters. And, and um, so, you know, when I'm writing about a, a male character, that's not me. I've already stepped into someone else's mind, someone else's shoes. Um, and that, that isn't to say that stepping into another gender doesn't pose uh, particular challenges, but it, it seems to me that it's just a further degree of, of that initial challenge. Um, I uh, was raised in large part by uh, my, my grandmother on a farm in rural Indiana, uh, just the two of us. Um, and um, while the voice of Neverhome is not my grandmother's voice, it feels very much akin to voices that she contained, that were haunting her in a way, her uh, maternal elders, uh, and especially when she'd get angry. Um, and she, she would raise her voice at her young teenage ward um, uh, who had come to live with her. And so um, I felt like I had that as a kind of given, and as a kind of gift, really, um, in inhabiting this other uh, person, this other mind. So much um, that we're still wrestling with, still dealing with, in the 21st century really reaches a kind of crescendo in the States uh, in the 19th century. Um, and so this period around the Civil War, which is a kind of fulcrum for issues to do with, with race um, and certainly to do with, with gender roles um, uh, and um, so many other things, is, really comes into a kind of focus in that time. And so I'm interested in, in some ways in exploring what we're still dealing with by looking at that particular period. I love the idea of people having a better understanding of the extraordinary, um, audacious, amazing things that women have done throughout history and in this particular time uh, uh, around the Civil War, mm -hmm. um, which was quite interesting in that um, these conditions were in place that made it possible for the women to do what they did, uh, including um, physical examinations that were almost non-existent, um, and ill-fitting uniforms, uh, government-issued ill-fitting uniforms so that one could hide one's form uh, rather easily, uh, and a kind of Victorian way of being in the world um, uh, that, that meant it wasn't too surprising that someone would not choose to take off 
his clothes, um, when in fact it was a her, uh, to stand at the side and not jump in the creek with all the others, because there were men who didn't want to do it either. Uh, and so these things were um, in place during this period um, that we lost soon afterwards. Uniforms got better, physical exams got more rigorous, uh, and the world shifted and made this kind of disguise not so easy to pull off. That, that is certainly something that I've spent some time thinking about when pipe dreams about these things. Um, I'm, I really like this uh, young actress, Rose Leslie, who was in the Game of Thrones series. She recently, uh, she recently died. She was Jon Snow's lover, mm. uh, if that means anything. Um, and uh, so she's someone I look at because she's really good. At, she was also in Downton Abbey. So she has this ability to, to play very different kinds of roles, a kind of warrior role, and then this much more restrained. Uh, role. So she's someone, and I think physically she would be she would be wonderful for it. And then a friend recently sent me an interview with the uh, the French actress Marion Marion Cotillard. Uh, and at the end of the interview, she says, "I've always wanted to play a man." So I love the idea of of her uh, playing a woman playing a man. Mm. So if only I could get that pitch to her. <laughs> I just finished, so I can say that I, I really am. Uh, reading it at the moment because I'm still thinking about it. I feel like I just shut, shut the book. Um, Unbroken by Lauren Hill, Laura Hillenbrand, um, which is about this uh, amazing um, uh, and sort of tragic, but then ultimately redem redem redempted figure, um, Louis Zamperini, uh, who was an Olympic runner who then went to war to fight in the Pacific and spent, uh, uh, had a horrific experience in a pr prisoner of war camp in the Pacific, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a pretty um, harrowing uh, story that uh, had extra meaning to me because my grandfather fought in the Pacific during World War II, and so that's why I picked it up, and I'm glad I did. Very nice. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Awesome.